you're going to see there's an infinite number of ways to solve reactions and then what in this class you're going to use the same methods to solve for internal reactions as well as look at the integration methods but what you want to do is go through this process each and every time and then decide when and if you're going to do something a little bit different so I'm going to go ahead and go through the process first thing you can generally establish your coordinate system I'll go with X and Y here and it's a right hand coordinate system so very quickly what you're going to want to do is establish really a zero zero point at the most logical spinny point and that's typically going to be a pin joint or a a pin joint or a um, fixed end moment and you're going to tend to then show reactions by unit vectors and re label them reaction at A in the Y and reaction at A in the X unit vectors make sure that you get the habit of making these unit vectors and remember that this is actually one force at a roller joint as well show it as a unit vector normal unit vector normal to the surface this is particularly important because often you have problems that are look straight up but often you don't okay once again unit vectors and those unit vectors you will remember have eventually values which can be tied to theta and phi so once you know a direction here later on you'll be able to break these into components and you'll have a check alright that's the first step show your reactions at unit vectors the next step is to slide all of your applied forces so that and this will be pretty common so that they're actually hanging from their tail so this one here I'm gonna see if I can actually draw it and then erase it this one here should you should draw it something like that and then get rid of let's see if we can do it you can get rid of that so that's gonna help the next step is then to figure out what is the centroid of each of your distributed loads and if you've got rectangles it's pretty easy and triangles you'll see are a third from the heavy end that's the next step the next step and I'll use a different color for this I guess is to draw those resultants and here as well and then eventually slide them down if you would Let's see if I can erase that one and slide this one down as well and slide this one down as well you want to really get that habit when you're doing them manually you want to get that habit of having them so the point at the end of the force or the tail is exactly at your point of application all right finally all you've actually got to do is a couple of things but you can go ahead and realize that when you're solving this problem you're interested in orthogonal distances so you'd like to know the distance from that some of the moments about a is equal to zero and of course this is the reaction at b not in any x or y though very often you can break that up into components going straight down or across the Remember, I would really recommend that you learn to do it with just a single force so you can, because it's going to be much more transferable to other methods where you've got access to CAD and math and everything else. So in this case, the sum of the moments about A equals zero, and you have the moment of that force plus the moment of that force plus the moment of that force plus the moment of that force are all positive, and this has to be, so the reaction has to be equal and opposite in moment to those. Now you're going to realize it's actually the sum of the R cross F's of the applied forces is equal to the opposite of the sum of the R cross F of the reaction. And very quickly you can see by using some of those definitions of moment how quickly you can do it. But you can realize also graphically now how you can 
Each of these are easily slid to there. One, two, three, that's easily done. This one here, if you think about it, you want to pass a parallel line, if you would, this way. And then basically what, swipe your area there. So you've got one area there, another area there, another area there, and another area there, all being reacted by some force times an orthogonal distance here. So that is the general concept that will really pay off. And the key thing here is to tend to simplify each of these distributed forces into a resultant, slide that resultant so it sits along some logical line so it makes the moments pretty easy. You can break this one up into components, but I would continue to recommend, especially when you're trying to get a quick solution by hand, thinking of the orthogonal distances and then solving for the moments. Once you solve for one, you go back and you do the same thing now. In this case, realizing that you won't be able to solve for the reaction A and the X because it will not have any moment about this point there. But you typically do it now a second of time, second, some of the moments about B. And then your check is that the sum of the forces equals zero. That is not how you solve, it is how you check. And so though we've shown some other ways up till now, you want to go through this process. And I'm going to now summarize it on the next sheet. So one, draw to scale, two, show reactions and label as unit vectors with a line of force three slide all applied vectors so there tails are hanging from the point of application. Four, get resultants of distributed forces. Resultants of distributed forces. and redo three. In other words, slide those from the point of application or down to the point. Five, write a sum of the moments about the logical spinny point. for the applied forces and solve for the reaction as the opposite. So remember, we're going to start working that a lot, that the sum of the, the reactions are the opposite of the applied. So this is going to pay off both in manual methods and when you get dealing with setting up matrices and stiffness matrices, uh, reaction matrices. You want to get pretty good at doing this and, and conceptualizing and being able to do it pretty quick by hand. I mean, realistically, you can do this all very quickly uh, and get an awfully quick solution as long as you can learn to see what is the moment arm. Remember the difference between sliding and swiping force vectors. Scale has a lot to do with this. Um, and you'll learn when you get into the CAD environment that you're very often going to need to change the scale a little bit on your moment so it doesn't get out of hand. So we'll look at that and uh, start applying this to problems. Thanks for listening.